Welcome back, my English school listeners. Today, we're revisiting the ever-popular topic of the American accent. We know you loved the essential tips from Mark last time, so we brought him back for a deep dive. Mark, thanks for joining us again. Hey, Sarah. Happy to be here. Mastering the American accent can be so rewarding, and there's always more to learn. Last time, we covered some foundational tips. Listening, shadowing, focusing on specific sounds. Now, let's explore some strategies for those wanting to take it to the next level. Great idea. First up, targeting a specific accent. There's a world of difference between a New Yorker's clipped tones and a Southern drawl. Identifying which American accent you want to emulate helps with focused practice. That makes perfect sense. So if someone wants to sound like a West Coast surfer dude, they wouldn't practice mimicking a Texan cattle rancher, right? Exactly, Sarah, though both accents are fascinating. Next, consider working with a speech coach. A good coach can analyze your specific challenges and provide personalized feedback tailoring exercises to your needs. Yes, Mark. Investing in a coach can be a real game changer. Let's talk about another crucial element, intonation. American English relies heavily on intonation for meaning and emphasis. It's not just about the words you say, but how you say them. May pay attention to the rise and fall of your voice while speaking. Recording yourself and comparing it to native speakers can be a powerful tool. That's a fantastic tip. Okay, next level tricks? Let's explore tongue twisters and minimal pairs in more depth. We mentioned them last time, but they're worth revisiting. Tongue twisters that target specific sounds you struggle with can be a fun and effective way to train your mouth muscles. Like she sells seashells by the seashore for that tricky sh sound. Exactly. And minimal pairs, those near homophones, help train your ear to those subtle vowel differences. Ship and sheep might look similar on paper, but the pronunciation is crucial. Those minimal pairs can be sneaky. Let's talk about the importance of engaging with native speaker. Socialize online or in person with Americans. This provides real-time practice and exposes you to natural speech patterns. Don't be afraid to ask for feedback, but of course, be respectful of their time. And remember, mastering the American accent is a marathon, not a sprint. Celebrate your progress, no matter how small. And couldn't agree more. Focus on the joy of communication and the cultural connections you're building. Learning a new accent opens doors. Let's jump right in. Our first question comes from Gabriela in Rio de Janeiro. Gabriela asks, There are so many American accents. Which one should I focus on learning? That's a fantastic question, Gabriela. There's no single American accent. There are regional variations. Think the New York twang versus the Southern drawl. Here's the key. Identify which American accent aligns with your goals. Are you aiming for a neutral accent for business settings or maybe the Hollywood glam? Well, Mark, our next question comes from Hiro in Tokyo. Hiro wants to know, what are some fun ways to practice the American accent? Make it fun, Hiro. Immerse yourself in American pop culture. Watch movies and TV shows. Listen to music by your favorite artists. Shadow their speech. Try mimicking what you hear. It might feel silly at first, but it trains your ear and mouth muscles. Love that tip. Next up, we have Anastasia from Moscow. Anastasia asks, I struggle with the R sound in American English. Any tips? And the R can be tricky. Here's a fun exercise. Try vibrating your lips while making a light R sound. It might feel unconventional, but it can help you get the hang of it. And we also have a question from Omar in Cairo. Omar asks, I'm worried about losing my native accent when I learn American English. What should I do? Don't worry, Omar. Learning an accent doesn't erase your identity. Your native accent can add a unique charm to your communication. Focus on fluency and clarity in American English while maintaining your beautiful native accent. Absolutely. Let's move on to a question from Priya in Mumbai. Priya asks, are there any apps or online resources to help me practice the American accent? There are tons, Priya. Many apps and websites offer targeted exercises for specific sounds and pronunciation challenges. Do some research and find one that suits your learning style. Fantastic, Mark. Next up, we have a question from Emily in London. Emily asks, how long will it take to master the American accent? Honesty time, Emily. There's no magic bullet. Mastering an accent takes dedication and consistent practice. You'll see progress quickly with the right approach, but mastering it takes time and effort. Team, our next question comes from Carlos in Madrid. Carlos wants to know, is it important to sound like a native speaker? Focus on clarity and communication, Carlos. 
A nuanced accent can be charming, but intelligibility is key. Be confident in your communication skills and the accent will naturally develop. And now fantastic advice, Mark. Our final question comes from Lee in Beijing. Lee asks, I'm shy about speaking English with an American accent. How can I overcome this? Don't be afraid, Lee. Embrace the learning process. Find a supportive language exchange partner or online community to practice with. Celebrate your progress no matter how small. The more you practice, the more comfortable you'll feel. Mark, you've been helping listeners navigate the complexities of American English for many years. But how did she develop such a perfect American accent? Tell us your story. <laughs> Thanks for having me on the other side of the mic, Sarah. My journey with the American accent is a bit of a winding road. Believe it or not, I grew up in Tokyo, Japan. Hey, wow, that's fascinating. So, how did an American accent end up on a boy growing up in Tokyo? Yes, Sarah. It all started with movies. My family owned a small video rental store and I spent countless hours lost in American films. I was captivated by the language, the characters, the whole world unfolding on screen. And you mimicked what you heard? Obsessively. I'd rewind scenes, pause dialogues, and try to replicate the sounds, the rhythm, the way the actors spoke. My parents were both doctors, and their English was very formal, so this American movie world felt totally different. Did your classmates or teachers pick up on your American accent? They sure did. I remember being called the American boy at school. It was a bit of a double-edged sword. Sometimes I felt teased, but other times, it opened doors. Kids would come to me with questions about American movies or music. So, Mark, you were like a walking, talking American pop culture encyclopedia? Exactly, Sarah. This fascination with American English only grew stronger. When I finished high school, I knew I had to experience the source of this language firsthand. So I applied to universities in the U.S. and landed a scholarship in Texas. Texas. That's a big jump from Tokyo. How did you adjust to the southern accent? It was another whirlwind. Everyone sounded different from what I was used to in the movies. The first few weeks were rough. I felt like I was surrounded by a new language again. But you persevered. Yes, Sarah. I immersed myself in everything Texan. I joined a local theater group, volunteered at a community radio station, and even convinced a local barbecue joint to let me bus tables in exchange for English lessons with the owner's niece. Wow, Mark, that's some serious dedication. So, how long did it take to truly master the American accent? Here wasn't a light bulb moment. It was a gradual process. Years of listening, practicing, making mistakes, and learning from them. Even now, I find myself occasionally slipping into a southern drawl after a long conversation with a Texan. The accent becomes contagious. So, Mark, your story is a testament to the power of passion and perseverance. What advice would you give listeners who want to master the American accent? Well, find your inspiration. What draws you to the American accent? Then surround yourself with the language, movies, music, podcasts, audiobooks. Don't be afraid to mimic what you hear and record yourself to identify areas for improvement. Most importantly, embrace the journey and celebrate your progress. Mark, that was a truly inspiring story. But mastering an accent can't be all sunshine and rainbows. Did you face any challenges along the way? Absolutely, Sarah. There were times when the new sounds felt awkward and unnatural. I also worried about losing touch with my Japanese identity. That's a valid concern. How did you navigate that? And I realized that embracing a new way of speaking didn't erase my heritage. My Japanese background adds a unique layer to my communication. Let's jump right in. Remember when you were talking about mimicking movie characters as a kid? There was a hilarious story you almost shared, then stopped yourself. Oh boy, here we go. All right. So one of my favorite movies was Terminator 2, and I was obsessed with Arnold Schwarzenegger's accent. I practiced his lines for hours, the whole hasta la vista baby thing. One day, at a family gathering, I decided to show off. Well, let's just say my pronunciation of hasta la vista was more like hasta la banana. There was a long silence. Then everyone burst out laughing. Even me. Mark, that's adorable. See, even the experts have their bloopers. Exactly. The important thing is to keep practicing and have fun with the process. A wonderful aspect of American English. Linking and blending. Mike, a pronunciation expert passionate about helping learners master the flow and rhythm of American speech. Mike, let's break it down. What exactly is correlation? Well, Sarah, think of linking as connecting the final sound of one word with the first sound of the next word. 
Imagine pronouncing get a drink as get a drink. Here, the T at the end of get connects with the D at the beginning of a drink. What? So it's about creating a seamless flow? Exactly. Now blending goes a step further. Blending involves slightly modifying the sound at the end of a word to connect more smoothly with the next sound. Can you give us an example, Mark? Sure. Take the phrase, can you help me? Often the N at the end of can blends slightly with the Y sound in you, creating a smoother transition. Interesting. Are there any specific sounds that are commonly linked or blended? Well, Sarah, consonants like T, D, P, B, L, and R are frequently linked at the end of words. Vowels can also be blended, especially when they're next to each other. So how can learners identify where linking and blending occur in American English? Great question. Listen closely to native speakers. Pay attention to how words flow together. Shadowing, mimicking what you hear, is a fantastic way to practice. And are there any pitfalls to avoid when linking and blending? Sure, overdoing it can make your speech unclear. Aim for a natural flow, not an exaggerated connection between sounds. Well, Mark, let's say a listener is worried about linking and blending making their speech sound sloppy. What advice would you give them? Okay, focus on clarity first. Make sure individual sounds are pronounced well. Then gradually introduce linking and blending exercises to achieve a natural flow. Yeah, let's get some real-world examples. Can you give us a sentence that demonstrates linking and blending? Sure, Sarah. Here's one. Let's go out to eat tonight. Here you might link the S in let's with the go and blend the T in out with the two. And how would that sound different if spoken without linking or blending? Let's go out to eat tonight. It sounds robotic and unnatural. Absolutely. So, linking and blending are key to achieving a natural flow in American English. Exactly. Remember, mastering these techniques takes practice, Brights, but the results are worth it. Mike, that was a fantastic explanation of linking and blending. Are there any advanced techniques learners can explore once they've grasped the basics? One technique is called intrusive R. This is when an R sound is inserted between a vowel and a consonant at the end of a word, even if it's not written. For example, what are R you doing? That can sound tricky for learners whose languages don't have intrusive R. Exactly, Sarah. Another technique is consonant deletion. Sometimes sounds at the end of words are subtly dropped, especially in fast speech. For example, I gotta go might sound like, I gotta go. You need so. It's about understanding these variations, depending on the speaking speed and context. Absolutely, yo. Now, let's talk about challenges. Are there specific languages where linking and blending might be particularly difficult for learners? Definitely. Languages with very distinct word boundaries where each word is pronounced very separately might require more practice with linking and blending. So, someone whose native language is, say, Mandarin Chinese, might find this more challenging than someone from Spanish or French? However, with focused practice, anyone can master linking and blending. Let's talk about listening comprehension. How does linking and blending impact how listeners understand American English? It's crucial. If you're not familiar with linking and blending, you might misinterpret sentences or miss important information. Understanding these techniques improves listening comprehension significantly. So, mastering linking and blending isn't just about speaking, it's also about understanding spoken English. Absolutely, they go hand in hand. And maybe some listeners can even come up with their own linking and blending tongue twisters. Another fun activity is speed games. Record yourself reading a simple sentence with and without linking and blending. See how much faster and smoother it sounds with these techniques. I love that. It gamifies the learning process. Now, Mike, you mentioned common mistakes. What are some things learners should be aware of? Overdoing it is a big one. Linking and blending should be subtle. Aim for a natural flow, not a mushy mess of sounds. So clarity is still key? Sure. Another mistake is linking the wrong sounds. Focus on the sounds that typically connect in American English, like T and D. Don't force unnatural connections. And are there any sounds that are generally not linked or blended? A good rule of thumb is to avoid linking or blending sounds across words if there's a pause between them. For example, in the sentence, can you help me? There's usually a slight pause before me, so you wouldn't typically link the N and Y sounds. Mike, last question. Any advice for learners who feel discouraged when they can't master linking and blending perfectly right away? Remember, fluency takes time and practice. Focus on the progress you're making. 
celebrate small victories and don't be afraid to make mistakes. That's how we learn. Thanks again, Mike, for these fun and informative insights.